We're on a good way here and we already made the split between components and containers. Though there still is one problem. Our application would quickly get pretty complex to manage or at least unreadable if it grew more complex because all the Redux code is handled in the index.js and it's already pretty long even though it's a very very simple application, isn't it? Typically, you would split this up. You would create a new folder in your app folder named reducers and you might guess what this folder holds. You would also create a new folder called actions. So that's the typical split you have. And then you also create another file called store.js which holds your store. So let's populate them with live step by step. What does the store.js file do? Well, if we go to the index.js file, it of course holds our store, this one here. I will copy my store or cut it, insert it here, but I will not set this to be a constant. Instead, I will set this to be my default export. So the thing this file exports, the store created here. I also, since I use logger here, need to import logger from Redux logger. Of course, you may get rid of it entirely if you don't want the log messages and you should get rid of it for your production application. Of course, in order to set up a store here, we also need to import some things from Redux, namely the same things we used in the index.js file before. So that's create store, combine reducers and apply middleware. We also got the problem that these reducers are not in the same file, so this will not work for now. But I'll come back to this soon. In the index.js file, I'll get rid of my own logger here, I'll get rid of the subscription, and then I want to create new reducer files here. I'll create a new reducer file here, which I'll call mothreducer.js, and then another one which I'll name userreducer.js. Now the math reducer file will of course hold my math reducer, which I'll cut and copy into here. And the user reducer, well, what will this file hold? The user reducer, of course. Now that shouldn't be a constant, it should be a default export and the same is true for my math reducer here, export. In my index.js file, it's getting, pre getting pretty lean here, isn't it? can get rid of all the imports I don't need anymore. I of course still render my app here. I still hook it up with the provider component. So that is how my index.js file will look like. In the store.js file I now need to import my reducers. So I need to import that from reducers and then math reducer and of course user reducer. And what do I want to import? Well, I could just name this math and user, which allows me to, again, use this shorter way of setting this up, like so. So now I'm setting up all the reducers. If we have a look at the application, you see it's not running. We get the error that store is not defined, which makes perfect sense because in the index.js file where I need to pass store to provider, I don't have my store. So I need to import that and to import it, I'm exporting it here as a default in the store.js file. So here I'm importing it from store, though with dot slash at the beginning to mark it as a relative import store like this. Now in order to finally make this work, I have to adjust my reducer files here. In order to be able to export a fat arrow function, what I need to do is I need to actually store that in a new constant which I'll name math reducer, oops, like this, and then export this math reducer constant here without parentheses. So simply put the number of words, make it a constant, and then export this constant here, like this. So if I save this and reload my application, it works. It works if I click this button, 
So now I split up my reducers, I have my smart and dumb components. We're still missing the actions though, so let's take care about this. Here I'll also create two new files, the math actions and the user actions, like so. Now how do I define such actions here? I will export multiple functions here. I'll name it add number for example, we'll get a number here and this will simply return a JavaScript object setting the type, add and setting the payload to number. So that's just one function, I'm going to duplicate this and have my subtract number function here which is also the same but with subtract here as a type. And as you can see, these types here are, or the way I, I set them up here is just this JavaScript object I'm dispatching later on. That's all these functions are returning. They are returning this JavaScript object which I want to dispatch later on. Now I'm copying all this and in my user actions, I'll set up set name and set age. Here I'll pass age and name, name and age. Rename this to set name and this to set age, like this. And now to hook this up, I'll go to my app.js file and here in the map this patch to props where I want to hook up set name. Well, I still want to hook up set name and I want to pass name, but here I'm calling this patch on set name and pass this name. Now what is set name here? Well set name is something I import from my actions. So import from actions, math actions here for example and I want to import, no not math, user actions and I want to import set name like so. And this should be double quotation marks as a side note to stay consistent. So now I'm doing this. If I save this, reload my app, click this button, it's still working as you see. But now I'm using these actions files. Now it would be a valid point to ask, well, what's the advantage? I still can't use duplicate action names. I still have the same problem as before. If I want to use an action with a type of add here, I would still have the problem that I also trigger my math reducer which listens to add, right? And now I split it up over multiple files, but what's the advantage of this? The advantage is that in bigger applications, it's much easier for you to manage your actions and reducers. You're probably seeing the pattern here that I have math actions and a math reducer, user actions and a user reducer. And I have clear, clear mappings of what I want to use there. It makes it very easy for me to maintain bigger applications, to add new actions, to change existing ones and to make sure that I'm using these actions in the right way or that I don't get one big file of actions and one big file of reducers, but instead I split them up by features, which makes it far more manageable. Regarding the issue of having the problem that I overwrite my, um, my names or my types here, well, one workaround would simply be to prefix your types. So you could see, say that set that you have user set name here at the beginning since we're in the user actions file. And then of course you would also change your reducer to listen to user set name and so on. So that overall makes your application much more manageable and much cleaner. Now rightfully you would say that we're using a lot of boilerplate code here for this very basic app here. And you would be right. Such a simple app is probably nothing where you want to use Redux, but in more complex apps, 
you'll quickly see it shine. And this initial boilerplate, which we set up here, all these files and folders, doesn't have to be expanded anymore. You'll only use or add some new reducers and action files and components and containers, but you don't have to add multiple new folders or write much more code in any of these core root files here. And that's the advantage. It's much more manageable. Your state is clearly managed and so is your app.